Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to section 6-5 of Financial Algebra. We're going to be talking about Social Security and Medicare today. So these are two of the largest uh, federal programs that help us take care of uh, family members who may have lost the main breadwinner in the home, uh, disabled workers, um, retirees while they're in retirement. It helps uh, not only with regular day-to-day uh, -day income, month-to-month -month or week-to-week -week income. It also helps with some medical uh, coverage for those who are on these particular programs. So let's dive into the vocabulary part right here. Let's start with our very first word. Uh, by the way, the first word is Social Security. Now, this is an insurance program funded by you and your employer and the US government and it provides income for surviving family members people after they retire and qualified disabled workers so as long as you've been a contributing member um, meaning that you've had social security withdrawn from your paycheck and paid into this pool then um, should you pass away and your family needs support they could apply for social security benefits um, if you're disabled on the job you can get social security benefits and then once you reach a certain age you can also activate the social security benefits that you've been paying into while you were uh, of working age now the federal uh, second word by the way federal insurance contribution act known as fica now this was passed during franklin d roosevelt era so the fdr area era in uh, 1935 now this mandated contributions from employers and employees to fund social security and medicare so prior to to the fica act prior to the federal insurance contribution act it wasn't mandatory that these funds were removed from your paycheck but after the FICA, but after FICA was placed into effect, these uh, mo this money came out before you even got your net. So you would earn money at work, and now through this new act, through this new law, that money for Social Security and Medicare part would be withdrawn from your paycheck, and then you would get what's left over. So it made a huge difference in how this federal program was funded, and it did uh, create a large influx of revenue for the federal government to run these two types of programs. So FICA tax is essentially, uh, it, well, it's our next vocabulary word, and it's essentially the actual um, taking of the money from your paycheck. So Social Security and Medicare tax are charged to employers and employees to help cover the cost of both programs. So it, it does take a large amount of money to fund these programs, and we got to make sure that if you're working as a W-2 employee and you're going to be part of this system, then you are automatically withdrawn, and that's what the FICA tax does. Next vocabulary word we have is social security tax. Now, this is just one part of the FICA tax. This is just the social security portion, and it represents 6.2% of your income uh, with a cap in, tw in 2018 of 128700 So the first $128,700 that you earn, that uh, that is subject to 6.2% tax. And then after that, it's no longer subject to any Social Security tax. Now, both you and your employer pay 6.2% to help fund the federal uh, insurance program, meaning in your paycheck, you get withdrawn 6.2%, but your employer is also contributing 6.2% of your total income into the program. So the employer and the employee are both liable for 6.2%. Then we have Medicare tax, that's our next vocabulary word, Medicare tax, and this represents 1.45% of your income, and this one has no cap, so it's going to tax 1.45% of every single dollar you make. And it's paid, uh, again, both by you and your employer to help fund the nation's largest medical insurance program. So Medicare is the largest insurance prog program across the country. So it's, it's funded by uh, workers, it's provided for people who need that additional support, especially when you get into the older age in retirement. Um, sometimes medical expenses get really high and Medicare helps to supplement that. There are other programs that you can buy on top of the regular Medicare plan to help supplement some other things, but those come at an added cost. This is just part of what's already included uh, in your in your Medicare package and there are different ways that you can get on the Medicare program including being older or um, having a d deceased qualifying uh, member of your family or being disabled so uh, that was Medicare tax and then lastly we got Social Security number right this is your ID number basically it's a unique nine digit number that belongs to you it'll never change and that number represents your identity for 
credit, taxes, and insurance purposes. So the the basically what the IRS or the insurance companies or credit bureaus they don't really know you by name. They know you by your nine-digit social security number. That is who you are. It's, you think of it kind of like a barcode. Every time you scan that barcode, that scan that unique nine-digit number, they know exactly that it's you. Whether you're contributing into the social security program, whether you're filing your tax returns, whether you're applying for a credit card, they know it's you based on the social security number that you get. So make sure you keep that top, te- you know, top secret. You want to keep it set away because you don't want anybody doing bad things uh, under your social security number or filing returns on your social social security number so keep that hidden away from from the general public all right let's do example problem number one so uh, Liam got his first job in 2006 uh, social security tax was 6.2 percent of his income with a cap of 94200 Medicare tax was 1.45 percent and remember Medicare has no cap so if Liam earned $73,210, how much did he pay for Social Security and Medicare tax? So first of all, I noticed that the $73,210, the, the amount that Liam earned, is less than the $94,200, which means that his entire check or his entire salary for the year is subject to both the Social Security 6.2% and the 1.45%. So what we're going to do is first calculate the uh, Social Security portion. So if we take the uh, 73000 two hundred and ten dollars and we're going to multiply that by the percentage that he pays for social security which is point zero six two or six point two percent and when we do that we multiply it out he ends up paying four thousand five hundred and thirty nine dollars and two cents and that is his social security portion of his tax of his fica tax right then the next thing we need to figure out is how much of his of his income it goes to medicare so we take the same seventy three two ten but instead of multiplying it by the 6.2%, this time we're going to multiply it by the 1.45. So the decimal version is 0145. And when we multiply that out, we see that $1,061.55. When you round that, uh, $1,061.55 is his Medicare tax. And now all we got to do is add those two together. So if we take the 43 um, sorry, 45.39 and two cents added to the 1,061.55 cents. Then we end up with a total of 5,657 uh, cents. So 5,600 dollars and 57 cents is the total that he ends up paying in Social Security and Medicare tax. So we're going to also do this algebraically. Liam earned X dollars last year, and we're assuming here that it's less than the maximum taxable amount for social security so he's within the gap so the whole thing is subject to uh to the social security and medicare tax so write an expression uh that represents what liam would pay for social security and medicare so we're essentially taking the seventy-three thousand that we had in our first problem and we're saying he's now earning x dollars we don't know how much he uh ends up um getting charged right or i mean how, how much he earns for the year so we're saying x dollars but we know that we're going to multiply that x dollars first by 0. 0.062 to get the portion of social security and whatever that is we're going to add it to um, the x dollars that he earned per year times the 0. 0.0145 right so this first part this this one we're multiplying times 0. 0.062 this is the social security portion when we multiply by, by 0. 0.0145 this is the medicare portion and when we add them together it gives us the total amount that we're uh, going to pay in, in uh, social security and medicare tax now since both of these have an x in them we can essentially uh, add these two because they're combined. We're combining like terms, so we, when we combine them, it's zero point zero seven six five x. That's a simplified version. And when you uh, when you normally talk about Social Security, Medicare, you it's it's about seven and a half percent is what people say because they round, but it's seven point six five percent times whatever your income is will cover both medical or uh, Medicare and Social Security tax. All right, we're going to work on example number two here, and it says express the social security tax in 2006 as a piecewise function. So I'm going to use the piecewise function. The notation I'm going to use is S of X. So it's the, you know, the cost of social security, basically. And now when we calculate social security, there are two different uh, two different amounts that we're going to use. First, before we reach the cap, and then after we reach the cap. Now, before we reach the cap, that's 0.062 
percent times however much money I make, which is X dollars, right? And that's it. That's that's the that's the expression that we need to use f to calculate the Social Security amount. Now, the only thing I need to add to this is the restriction, and the restriction says, well, the only time this 6.2 percent works is when X is greater than zero but less than or equal to the cap in 2006, which was $94,200. So I'm only gonna charge six and a half, or 6.2% of my salary if my salary is less than or equal to the $94,200. But what if it's more than the $95,200, or $94,200? Well, if I multiply 6.2% of 9,400, I end up with $5,840 and 40 cents so if I make more than that then my cap is the second part of this equation my cap is gonna be just this five thousand eight hundred and forty dollars and forty cents because I know it's six and a half percent or six point two percent of my total cap and now this second equation the second part which is just the answer five thousand eight hundred and forty that's only gonna work when X is greater than ninety four two hundred anything above that that's the most that I'm gonna end up getting charged that's the cap so the uh, checking for understanding says Mila worked three jobs in 2006 her total income was less than the 94 200 so it means her entire income is subject to Social Security now at McDonald's she earned X dollars at Carl's Jr. she earned Y dollars and at Home Depot she earned Z dollars express the total Social Security and Medicare tax algebraically now remember in the previous example we said that it was going to be uh, 0 0.0765 of whatever income you made and that would cover both Social Security and Medicare tax, right? 7.5% of both. And the only reason why we can stick with this one is because we, we know that Mila earned less than the cap. So we know the whole amount that she's going to earn, whatever X is going to be, is going to be multiplied by the 7.65% and that's for Social Security and Medicare tax. However, we need to replace the X. It's not x anymore because she's working at three jobs so it's going to be whatever she earned at the x job which is mcdonald's plus what she earned at the y job which was carl's jr plus what she earned at the z job which was home depot whatever those three salaries are when we add them together we multiply by the 7.65 percent or 0 0.0765 and that right there is going to give us what we're looking for that's going to tell us how much she's going to get taxed in social security and medicare algebraically because we don't know how much she made x y or z dollars all right example number three here they give us this graph this social security uh tax along the y-axis compared to the income along the x-axis and basically this graph represents social security tax it's saying if you if you notice on the graph it's increasing based on how much money you're earning so as the more income you earn the more social security tax you're paying until we hit the cusp which is at ninety four thousand two hundred and fifty eight forty and forty cents that means at that point we level out there is no more increase in the social security tax because that is the cap at that income level ninety four two hundred so the check you for understanding problem says uh... let's say uh... medicare or medicare i'm sorry social security tax was thirty five hundred dollars during the year uh... use the graph to approximate the income so if we look at the graph the tax is thirty five hundred so if i look at the tax one two three thousand about halfway between three thousand and four thousand would be thirty five hundred and that i can find that social security social security tax on the y-axis and if i take that and i draw a horizontal line all the way across until I reach the red line, that'll help me to approximate how much income that uh, that I'm I'm earning, and it's going to be somewhere um, more than uh, fifty thousand, but less than sixty thousand. So I'm going to approximate that it's going to be about fifty-five thousand dollars that uh, of income that I'm going to earn to get taxed thirty-five hundred dollars in Social Security income. All right, so, so in question number three, it's more of an approximation. It's not a right or wrong answer. It's can you use the graph that's given to you, um, understanding what is represented on the y-axis, understanding what is represented on the x-axis, and then using the information that they give me from the y-axis to find the associated or the corresponding x-coordinate um, to help me determine the salary. And it's an approximation, and we're going with 55000 approximately. All right, example number four. In 1998, so before many of you were born, in 1998, the Social Security tax was 7.51% to the maximum income of 45000 So if Grace earned $51,211 in 1998, 
how much social security did you pay right so you got to kind of think about how uh what the cap is in this particular scenario so we're saying in 1998 it was 7.51% but with a max of 45,000 now grace earned 51 to 11 so the most we're going to get taxed on is the first 45,000 that's the cap so what we're going to do for this problem is we're going to take that 45,000 and we're going to multiply it by the 0 0.0751, which represents the 7.51% of Social Security tax. And when we do that, we end up getting $3,379.50. That is the total Social Security tax that you were maxed out at paying in 1998, 7.51% of the first 45000 So even though she earned another, what, $6,211, even though she earned an extra amount, out, she doesn't have to pay social security tax on that now if the question had asked us about Medicare that you do have to continue to, to pay uh, on it doesn't matter what your income level is you're gonna pay whatever the Medicare tax is in that year uh, percentage wise at, in relation to your income so uh, last little section here says in 1998 you paid two thousand eight hundred and fifty three dollars and eighty cents in social security tax um, how much did you have in taxable income? So let's assume that this this is uh, under the cap because we know well we know it's under the cap because the cap in that year was thirty three seventy nine fifty. So if we take the twenty eight fifty three and eighty cents, which is our total social security tax, which is what we got in our problem above, to get to the thirty three above, we multiplied by seven point five one percent. So if I want to go backwards, then I got to divide by. 7.51%, right? And when I do that, I end up getting $38,000. So it's less than the $45,000 cap, which makes sense because my tax is less than the 337950 cap. So that's about it. That's the uh, lesson for today. So we were able to um, compute paycheck deductions for Social Security. We were able to compute uh, paycheck deductions for Medicare. And we got a little bit of an understanding on the caps in the different years. Understand that the cap in 2018, when this is being recorded, by the way, is 128700 for Social Security. And our Social Security tax is 6.2%. But we looked at the Social Security percentage in 2006. We looked at the Social Security percentage in 1998. And understand that Congress can make things change any way they want to by simply passing a new law and you know those figures would change so in today's terms we're looking at 6.2 percent of 128 700 for social security and 1.45 for medicare medicare has no cap social security has a cap all right so uh what i like to tell uh, people when they're when they're doing their tax return by the way is those deductions for social security and medicare you can kiss them goodbye they, you will probably never see them again unless you uh, make it to retirement or utilize social security and medicare uh, during that time but other than that there's no way to get your refund on those um, uh, for the most part there are very few things you can do to get social security uh, back uh, if you overpay into it but other than that that's pretty much a goodbye so, all right, enjoy this section. Good luck on your chapter six test. And remember, as always, you can review any chapter at csfirst.com.